Hello, I'm the Analyst, and I'm here to talk about Hollywood's biggest box office flops. Nowadays, it seems that all animation is computer-generated 3D, driven especially so by Disney and Pixar, Blue Sky, Illumination, and DreamWorks. Having effectively become the new norm in the early 2000s after it appeared that traditional 2D animation had died out at the box office. Now, Blue Sky Illumination and Pixar had all started out with CG animation and haven't looked at 2D, though Disney and DreamWorks both really began with 2D. Disney would mostly drop traditional animation by 2005, following the massive failure of Home on the Range, though it hasn't stopped altogether, seeing how they would later put out The Princess and the Frog and Winnie the Pooh. DreamWorks, however, is a different story. DreamWorks animation started with a mix of 2D and CG animation, with The Prince of Egypt being their biggest 2D success, though they would soon falter in 2D with the disappointing runs of The Road to El Dorado and Spirit Stallion of the Cimarron, and would shift to purely CG animation thanks to the massive success of Shrek. But what made them drop 2D altogether was, much like Disney, a massive 2D animation failure. That is what we're here to talk about today. Sinbad, Legend of the Seven Seas, was a 2003 animated feature inspired by Sinbad, not the comedian who can't act, but the sailor from Middle Eastern stories, known for his many adventures that leave him against supernatural forces and constantly in danger. However, this depiction of Sinbad isn't quite like his portrayal in the stories, as here he is an arrogant, greedy pirate, not as the merchant-slash-sailor who found himself in trouble, though admittedly Sinbad did do some morally questionable thing, like bludgeon a woman to death for her food. As the film begins, we clearly see that the 2D animation looks quite good, with a nice bit of style as Sinbad and his crew prepare to rob a ship holding the Book of Peace, which preserves the peace between the twelve cities. Why? So just imagine how much all of us will pay to get it back. And if you don't know, Sinbad is voiced by Brad Pitt, who I can buy as playing this character, he fits the character nicely with his suave calmness and arrogance. Sinbad and his crew attack the ship with the book and do quite well handling the guard, at least until Sinbad realizes that leading the protection on the Book of Peace is Proteus, his old childhood friend. Proteus. And voiced by Joseph Fiennes, brother of Ray Fiennes, who previously voiced Ramses II in The Prince of Egypt. Proteus attempts to reason with Sinbad to keep him from stealing the book, but Sinbad doesn't seem to care with Proteus's Sinbad, cries. A long time ago, Stop. you and I were friends. If that ever meant anything to you, prove it now. You're right. That was a long time ago. However, the arrival of a Cetus, a sea monster. What the? Puts the heist on hold as both crews must then fight it off. Give that guy a raise. Looking at the seat, it's obviously CG. It doesn't blend all that well with the two enemy backgrounds. Sinbad and Proteus work together. Now! To ultimately defeat the Cetus. But it then takes Sinbad with it under the sea. Before he immediately drowns, he finds himself before the goddess of discord, Eris, who is brilliantly voiced by Michelle Pfeiffer and easily steals the show here. Eris asks him to bring but her the Book of Peace. There's just one little thing you have to do. Get the Book of Peace and bring it to me. Find yourself to Tartarus. My realm of chaos. 
and he can and have can whatever have his little heart desires. And the island, and the world. And Sinbad seemingly agrees. Sinbad and his crew follow the ship containing the book to Syracuse, where Proteus's father, King Dionysus, places the Book of Peace in a tower for its protection and to show off its light. Sinbad and crew visit Syracuse and intend a celebration of the book's arrival with the intention of stealing it. But Sinbad decides to leave after seeing Proteus' fiance Marina. Voiced by Catherine Zeta Jones. Unfortunately, Eris, having foreseen Sinbad not stealing the book, steals the book herself while disguised as Sinbad. Framing him for the theft, All following the by shutting the book, which causes chaos to arise across the twelve cities. The book. Sinbad is arrested Sinbad. Proteus. and interrogated for where the book is, but claims first to Proteus. Eris. What? Eris. She framed me. Then to the others that the book is in Tartarus, from which no sailor has it. ever returned. Very well, then. The court of the, the Twelve Cities the doesn't 12 believe cities him and sentences him to death. And we sentence you to die. But Proteus intervenes and asks to take Sinbad's place I demand the right of substitution. on death. Sinbad, Sinbad is given is ten days to return the book to the book. Syracuse. Release him. Or Proteus will be executed in his place. Dark. Sinbad, however, decides to take his time and flee to Fiji. So where are we going? Fiji. Okay, Fiji. The film is taking place somewhere between 733 and 212 BC, based on events. So why would Sinbad be talking about Fiji? wasn't discovered until at least the 1600s AD. Furthermore, Sinbad was originally published between 700 and 1200 AD during the Golden Age of Middle Eastern culture, so there's literally no way he would know about Fiji. Back to the plot, Sinbad is about to leave Proteus to die, but Marina is revealed to have snuck aboard the ship. This. can't believe it. Oh, but this can't be real. Then bribes Sinbad to help save Proteus. Hey Sinbad, isn't Proteus your friend? You have to be paid to help him. Anyway, as Sinbad and his crew head to Tartarus, Let's provide some mood music. Eris intends to slow them down. First by sending in the sirens to distract the men. Sirens. However, Marina proves himself by not only keeping the crew from going overboard, but also steers the ship safely through. Though Sinbad ship. isn't all this that grateful. And here, these moldings came all or is he pretending not to be grateful? She did save the ship, Captain. Next, while we'll getting set to catch up some of the damages from Marina's driving the ship to safety, they discover the island they're on is actually a giant fish. And Sinbad comes up with a way to use the fish to gain extra speed in moving them farther along towards Tartarus. Meanwhile, back in Syracuse, Dimas attempts to get Proteus out of the city, having no faith in Sinbad. Are asleep or well bribed, but we must go now. But Proteus refuses to leave Syracuse in exile. Eris then traps Sinbad's ship in ice before sending a rock. A bird of prey that originated in Persian culture after them, 
which captures Marina. But Sinbad rescues her, and they escape in a rather well-animated chase. Here, you also take notice that Zeta Jones is improving her vocal performance throughout the film. At first, she isn't all that good, but she does get better. Eventually, Sinbad and the crew reach the end of the world, and with that, Tartarus, managing to not crash by rigging the sail such that the ship would fly. Come on, come on, come on! Sinbad and Marina enter Tartarus. Where they realize Eris had planned the whole thing, which would result in Proteus' death leaving Syracuse without an heir and plunging the cities into chaos. You knew he would take my place. <laughs> what a clever little man you are. You thought I'd run. Then Proteus would die, and Syracuse would be left, left without the next rightful king and tumble into glory. She then shows the Book of Peace and offers it to Sinbad if he answers a question truthfully. That question being... So here's my question, Sinbad. If you don't get the book, will you go back to die? Sinbad says he would, but Eris calls Molar. You're lying! It deposits the two back in the moral world without the book. And Sinbad admits he honestly believes he would let Proteus die. Though Marina insists otherwise. I'm trying to pass myself off as someone I'm not. Sinbad, I've seen who you are. You don't need to pretend. Eris trapped you. Why should you or Proteus or anyone? When Sinbad's tender turn is up and Proteus is about to be executed in Sinbad's place, Sinbad returns without the book to accept his punishment. Before the blade can cut his head off, Eris arrives. Furious that Sinbad foiled her plan, I didn't lie. Sinbad then points out he I did answer back. truthfully That's why that you're as here. a this god is she is test. bound by her word, and wasn't there some forcing her to return the Book of Peace. Restoring everything to normal. Sinbad receives an apology and departs, but Proteus, having realized that Marina has fallen for Sinbad, which is why Sinbad originally left Syracuse in the first place, releases her from her engagement and she joins Sinbad to go on his many adventures across the world. Don't worry, I'll protect you. Looking back at Sinbad, the animation is generally well done. In fact, it was the first animated film to be done using the Linux, an operating system that isn't meant to be used for creating animation. Though the CG doesn't quite fit the 2D animation. The writing's a bit flat, and some of the characters do feel like stereotypes such as Rat and Kale, with Sinbad's character development being predictable. But hey, at least predictable character development is better than no character development. DreamWorks invested $60 million into the production of Sinbad, plus a massive marketing spend, presumably around $100 million, for a combined cost of $160 million. The film was released on July 2, 2003 to get ahead of the 4th of July holiday, but opened in a week 6th place with about 6.9 million for a five-day debut of 10.06 million. It didn't help going up against Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, and Legally Blonde 2 that exact same weekend, as well as also having the still strong Finding Nemo in release. It had a modest 37% dip the following weekend, despite going up against Pirates of the Caribbean, but the next weekend, it lost over a thousand theaters and crashed 56%. The following weekend, it dipped 79% at 
after losing 1,150 theaters more and going up against Spy Kids 3D. Sinbad ended its run on October 9th, 2003 with 26.5 million domestically. Fared a bit better overseas with 54.3 million, with the biggest markets being France with 8 million and South Korea with 6.6 million. After theaters took their cut of the gross, DreamWorks would be left with $32.3 million, covering more than half of the budget, but none of the incredibly expensive marketing push. Today, Sinbad is seen as a cult classic, primarily for its animation and for Michelle Pfeiffer's performance as heiress. Though that didn't stop DreamWorks from shutting down traditional animation and going straight to CG animation. Their decision would be somewhat vindicated, with Shrek 2 becoming the highest grossing animated film ever at the time, with over 900 million worldwide, which beat Finding Nemo. The estimated theatrical loss on the film is $127.7 million. Thanks for watching, press the like button, and be sure to subscribe.